So now I'd like to talk about one of our latest developments. This is Livetrack Autofocus. So first I'd like to introduce the problem. When we do RAM mapping, we use a microscope objective to ensure that the laser light is focused onto the sample. This gives the benefit of having a small spot size, which enables us to achieve a very high spatial resolution. Real samples don't always remain in focus during RAM mapping, and this is shown in the schematic here. So the first image shows us in focus with the sample, with the laser falling on the top surface. However, as we progress along the sample, you can see our focus falls above the sample, and finally into the sample. And this poor focus can result in a reduced sensitivity, so we lose RAM intensity. It changes the actual RAM and collection volume from the sample, so we can no longer use intensity-based methods to uh, it in a quantitative form. It also reduces our spatial resolution. And unfortunately, lots of samples are not well suited to RAM mapping. So they can be tilted, rough, have complicated geometries, they might change with time, or it might be a combination of these things. And as illustrations on the right, I've included an image of a lithium ion battery electrode. So this is made out of carbon. And you can see here, um, even over this small area, which is about 20 microns in size, you can see regions where we're in focus and out of focus. Beneath that is an image of the tiger's eye rock that I showed on the first slide. And here we just have a macroscopic object. It's rough, it's tilted, it has an unknown geometry. And as a result, it's quite challenging to measure. So in all these cases, it's not straightforward to maintain focus. The traditional solution would be to use an objective lens with a larger depth of field. This means going to a lower magnification, a lower numerical aperture objective. And while this is fine, it's, uh, because we're reducing the numerical aperture on our objective, we also sacrifice RAM and intensity and spatial resolution. So at a cost of mapping these samples, we're actually losing quite a bit of our performance. Finally, the other option is just to prepare the samples so they're flat. This is undesirable. In certain cases, it's very valuable and it's certainly a viable technique. But in other cases, you might have a unique sample which is uh, beyond value and as a result, you cannot afford to modify in any way. Or modifying the sample might actually result in uh, chemical changes which defeat the object of carrying out the and spectroscopy measurement. What I'd like to show you now is how live track our new autofocus technique offers a much better solution than these two. So LiveTrack continuously adjusts the height of the motorized microscope stage to maintain perfect focus during both viewing and scanning of the sample. And this is highlighted in the uh, animation on the right hand side. So you can see whereas before I would be in that focus, now I nicely track the surface during measurements. LiveTrack runs in parallel with RAM measurements and doesn't add any extra measurement time. Um, it works over a large area, so we can use the whole XYZ stage range. And the benefits are clear. So our RAM measurements are always in focus, so we always get the best performance from them. Um, it also works in optical browsing mode, so you can uh, look at the sample under the microscope and it automatically maintains the Z as you scroll around the sample. During measurement, we read out the position of the Z stage, and this enables us to get information on the sample. Topography, which we can then overlay with the Raman image to provide more information on your sample. The technique itself enables uh, samples with complex geometries to be mapped. We can also push it a step further and it allows moving systems to be held in focus, such as evaporating liquids, for example. And this live track technology is available on the Envia Contour and the R802 instrument.